I'm George Anderson, the executive director of Anderson & Anderson based in Los Angeles. We are a major provider of executive coaching for disruptive physicians. What you are about to observe is an interview with two prominent surgeons who are going to give their personal feedback on their experience with the Anderson & Anderson client workbooks, bar on assessment, contrasting wheels of behavior, as well as the overall coaching for disruptive physicians. Thank you so much for considering Anderson and & Anderson. I'd like to ask you some questions regarding the Anderson & Anderson curriculum for disruptive physicians. First of all, you were introduced to the bar on emotional intelligence assessment. And I would like for you to share with us what your impressions of the assessment was, things that you may have been surprised to learn about yourself, and any of the feedback that you think might be useful to us regarding this assessment. As far as the uh, assessment, which is the emotional intelligence. Uh, I was surprised that I have such capabilities and uh, uh, more than what I expected myself. And uh, I found the deficiencies, which I'm working on it now. But it gave me confidence. And uh, how do I deal with uh, people in a better way and I'm using it as my guidance system uh, in my life and uh, I wish I knew about it a long time ago. The bar on assessment was really a bit of a surprise and uh, when I first looked at the the download I wasn't really sure that it was going to be able to give me a lot of uh, information uh, because I do try to get information from a test that I'm taking. I looked at it as being a test. But as I went through the assessment, I became more and more at ease with it because it asked questions that I could answer, uh, I thought, very honestly. I was surprised at uh, the fact that it was able to pick up on uh, points that uh, were not apparent to me uh, in, a, in, a, in a very, very, very active way, but in a deep way. I f it showed me things about my ability to be empathetic with other people. I knew I was empathetic with people, but I didn't think it was one, it was something that was noticeable or could be tested. And it also looked at the most important part, it looked at the deficiencies that I had, and that was truly accurate. And it was, it, when I looked at the results, the way that they were uh, presented, not as deficiencies on one side or, and, and strengths on the other, but they were mixed together in those, those 15 different categories. And it was able to show me how it all fit together because as a human being, it's very difficult to separate out 15 different parts of yourself because I see Sometimes when I, I see a, a part of myself, it, that's all I can see. I can't see the other 14 parts. But as I looked at the 15, I felt good about that assessment. I really like the way you were able to recognize that even though the results of your assessment were generally positive, there are so many of the spokes on those particular wheels that can be incorporated into your practice to excel even further in terms of your level of competence. Having taken the bar on assessment, how do you think that you can incorporate the results of this assessment into your practice and your day-to-day -day operations uh, with others? This will help everybody that takes the time to go through the process. And as a physician, 
I assure you that it hasn't been easy. You ask for a very, very vaunted position and, and be able to help people. And that, there's a lot of friction involved in it. A lot of things happen to you over a time of years or days and sometimes in, a, in an hour. You need this. You have to know how to communicate with the other people. And part of that communication is uh, uh, verbal, small part. But the behavior is the major part. And you have to learn how to uh, listen to the people, uh, respect the other people's feelings. If you can read their minds, predict what their feelings are, and this is emotional intelligence, use your brain. This is really great. I like the way you're able to see multiple uses for this particular material. Thank you so much. How do you think that you may use this information in a way that would increase your competence? I think it can only improve my bedside manner because it reinforces uh, my bedside manner that I have been using for the last 35 years. Uh, empathy is the strongest uh, uh, component, I believe, in having a bedside manner. And I test it highly in that area. And uh, I have been, uh, I've been the recipient of a lot of comments and compliments about my bedside manner. But your bedside manner can always improve. Because there have been situations where my bedside manner has not been perfect because I didn't realize that you can be in the company of a patient whose behavior uh, would make it very, very difficult for, you, for anyone to be empathic to them. Particularly if they are, well, if they're, if they're mean or if they're, they're the ill and, and they're, they're hostile, I can give myself an opportunity to assess that put it in perspective, and to check my own emotions and say, okay, this person is obviously angry in general, not necessarily angry at you. Allow that. Understand that. Respond appropriate to that. Yes, yes, this is really, really good. What I'd like for you to do next is think about the practice of control, which is the Anderson and Anderson client workbook, and give me your impressions of that document and also suggest how this will be useful to you in your practice. The uh, practice of control, <coughs> your book, uh, deal with four items, anger, stress, communication, and emotional intelligence. All these items, uh, whether the uh, practice of control or the emotional intelligence um, uh, composites are all interconnected to each other. Uh, it, it just gives you the, uh, the map to uh, sail smoothly in that complex web of life we are dealing with uh, especially in the medical practice. There is so much that's in that client book that <clears throat> it's not something that you can read once and get. It asks you to, to make responses and you actually have to, uh, you're asked to make choices, to actually write on the pages. And I was reluctant to do that because I knew I had to go over these pages again. And when I went over them again, I wanted to be able to look at this question because it's not going to be something I've seen for the first time, but it's for the second or third or the fourth time. And I want to be able to see what my response will be. I want to use it as a means of finding out how I have changed as I've gone through this book. It is a book which a physician, a healer, can appreciate uh, because it addresses the things that I think are unique for the physician who happens to be a human being and a healer. I very much appreciate the idea that each time you read the curriculum, you find something new 
or novel that had not been noticed the first time around. This is the way it was designed, and I'm glad you picked that up. Thank you. Now that you have been introduced to the instrument which we call the contrasting wheels of behavior, how do you think you can modify or adapt this particular instrument for use in your practice? First of all, this uh, <coughs> contrasting wheel of behavior has the positives and the negatives. The positives is the act listening, assertiveness, uh, honest feedback, uh, acceptance, compromise, um, and these are good things in communications and dealing with the people. The uh, negatives uh, are hostility, rage, inattention, uh, manipulation, controlling, intimidation, and uh, these are the roadblocks to uh, communication. As a surgeon, I recommend it to be uh, an imposter in the operating room in front of the operating surgeon. So before he yell and scream and get angry with the nurse or the anesthesiologist or the assistant surgeon, he has to look at it and take a deep breath, time out, and cool down, and then he starts to talk. And I'm sure he will never be angry. When I first saw these wheels, uh, these posters, which the different uh, aspects of human response of responses could be, I was actually a little frightened by the one that was in red. I don't know why, because it was explosive. And that was a negative wheel, I believe. And it had some very strong uh, words in it, like words like rage, intimidation, manipulation. Those are all bad things. And they were all collected in one place. <laughs> And right next to it, and I, I saw it, but I couldn't take my eye off the red, was the soft, calm blue wheel, which were the positive wheels. And the two sitting on, on, a, wall, on, on a wall, sitting next to one another, I, just, I, was, I didn't know what to do with it. It was very, 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 it was intimidating. And I didn't think that I'd get it. But as I looked at the card, that was helpful because I got an opportunity with that card over the next night or two uh, to get familiar with it, get comfortable with it. I could actually view it. I could, I could accept it. And I wasn't really sure what to do with it. But as I sat down and worked with you, with the, and you worked with me, you showed me, using examples from uh, one of your other publications, that how this wheel worked. And as you showed me how to use it as a tool, then I realized how I could use it. I now know that I can take that, uh, those posters, and put them in my OR, put them in my office, and then, with time, and with, with the process of introduction and explanation, and also give examples, they'll be able to see that this is truly a tool. It's a tool for communication. It's a tool for resolution of stress. And we have stress, plenty of stress. I like your response to this particular instrument. And so that I think that there are many creative ways that can be used to master material that are on both of these wheels. Now that you've been exposed to the Anderson and Anderson curriculum for disruptive physicians, how would you explain to a potential client the value of such a program? If you think that this program is not going to be helpful, or if you think this program is a waste of time, uh, or you, you want to value it, go through it first. Give the, the process a chance. You're a smart person. You're capable. 
but you're here. And this program, and believe me, because I've completed it, this program is going to help you. I felt that every human being should be aware of what you are doing. And uh, if we follow uh, what you taught us in this course, we will have peace in this world. You will sail smoothly in that uh, complex web of life we have. And uh, we will get along with your colleagues. And uh, you will live longer because anger causes nothing but uh, a heart attack or stroke. And uh, you will accomplish nothing. I really am glad that you can see the value of this particular model for use with any group of people under almost any circumstances. This is very, very positive and growth producing, I think, for all of us. I would like to express my appreciation to Dr. Zaki as well as Dr. Duramus, both very, very busy surgeons who have given their time to share with us their feedback from the Anderson and Anderson curriculum for disruptive physicians. If you would like to gain additional information regarding our program, please visit our website at andersonservices.com or phone our office at 310-207-3591. Thanks again.